viewers and listeners, thanks very much for joining me tonight for this presentation. When I received the phone call a couple of weeks ago, and I heard Mr. Carl Anderson on the other end from the National Library Service, I was wondering which of my sons did not return the library book and how much the fine was be. But as luck was to have it, it was not about a missing book, but an invitation to, re to present this lecture tonight on the impact of Jackie Opel on the music industry in Barbados and the wider Caribbean. So I thank you very much for joining me for this presentation. I was indeed happy to agree to make this presentation for I was a longtime colleague of the late Dr. Elizabeth Watson, whose PhD thesis I had the opportunity to examine along with the world-renowned ethnomusicologist, Professor Kenneth Bilby. Dr. Watson's thesis is entitled Uncovering and Recovering Caribbean Popular Music, Jackie Opel as a Case Study. I am also aware of the work on the impact of Jackie Opel on Barbados, and in particular Jamaica, and the reggae music, done by Professor Mike Allen, who was a former radio announcer here at the CBC, and who is now in the Department of the Recording Industry at the University of Middle Tennessee in the United States. Professor Arlene has done a wonderful entry in the Encyclopedia of Riga Music, which was published in 2012. Also, I spent hundreds of hours speaking with my late colleague and friend and co-music producer, Colin Observer Reed. Observer spoke to me at length about Spooge and Opel in Barbados during the late 1960s and 1970s. And he even had his thesis about the naming of Spooge, which I will not mention here on this broadcast for fear of storing up an ant's nest. Also, we have the tremendous work by my colleague, Professor Corwin Best, who has written no less than three very crucial works. Roots to Barbadian Popular Culture, Culture at the Cutting Edge, and the Popular Music and Entertainment Culture of Barbados. All of these are very important works that speak to the movement around Spooge and Jackie Opel. But tonight, I would add to this discussion, to this discourse, my own reflections as an insider in the music industry. After all, I've been in the music industry in the Caribbean region and the diaspora for over 30 years, starting in the 1980s, and transforming alongside my music career as a scholar since the late 1990s. My central argument tonight is that Jackie Opel helped inspire the Barbados industry, the Barbados music industry, and the wider Caribbean music industry to achieve greater heights. The key word here is inspiration. Inspiration. And inspiration could also lead to impact. My point is that through Opal's creation of Spooch, he inspired musicians across the region, musicians at home here in Barbados and elsewhere, to experiment, to embrace innovation. And we need to remember that Spooge 
emerging Barbados just about the time you had in Jamaica the transformation up until the early or mid 1960s the main musics in the region were and I talk about popular music were Calypso and Mento and many would say Calypso and Mento basically are cut from the same bolt of cloth for those of you who are not so familiar with Jackie Opel's biography, let's recap. So Opel, we can say, is a legendary vocalist. His vocal style in ska, rocksteady, and spooch are all world-renowned. He was born in Bridgetown, Barbados, in 1938 we are told that it was Byron Lee the legendary Byron Lee who saw him and heard him and took him to greater heights by moving him to Jamaica where he joined the Scatterlites and recorded many solo tracks for a variety of music producers or music labels. Among those, we have Studio One and Coxon Records. Now, the 1960s was indeed a period of burgeoning nationalism. After the Second World War, which ended in 1945, we have the main event in the Caribbean being the creation of the West Indies Federation. The Federation was formed in 1958 with headquarters in Porto Spain, Trinidad, and by 1962 there was a famous quotation, one from ten leaves nothing. And so Jamaica withdrew from the Federation and became an independent nation. But the achievement of political independence by Jamaica also helped to boost a music industry in Jamaica and also we could see the wider Caribbean. In fact, many are not aware that in the 1950s and 1960s that Jamaica can be said to be the music capital of the world. Just like today, in the 21st century, well, before COVID, certainly, because in the last few years, we have had a little movement in the music industry in terms of performance. But Trinidad and Tobago would be the main performing era, starting around December and going right into the carnival season, January, February, sometimes early March. From Trinidad, most persons move across the territories to the various carnivals. And at this time of the year, mid-August, most would be heading to London, Notting Hill Carnival. And from Notting Hill, you would move to New York for Labor Day. And from Labor Day, you will move briefly across the rest of North America. And by October, you find yourself in Miami for Miami Carnival and you meet the circle again. So in the 1950s and 60s, <clears throat> typically you will move from your home territory to Kingston, Jamaica. I have seen many references noting the Lord the Lord sorry, Lord Kitchener, Alwyn Roberts Kitchener. Moving from Trinidad, spending two, three months in Jamaica, and then making his way onto London in the 1950s and 1960s. So Opal moving to Jamaica in the 1960s with Byron Lee, he was moving to, we can say, the Caribbean music capital at the time. Opal was a very diverse vocalist. He can sing anything. Ska, 
R&B, soul, gospel, calypso, and so on. We are told that he left Jamaica and moved to Trinidad and eventually coming back to Barbados in 1970 where he died in March at about age 32. Fairly young in comparison to the lifespan these days. But during his short period back in Barbados, he was instrumental in developing what we call spooch. Spooch became, for many, after his death, symbolic of post independence Barbados music achievement. Of course, Barbados gained political independence in uh, 1966. And we know we are on the verge of another significant constitutional movement. There are many among us who argue that Opal, during his lifetime, never gained the recognition he deserved. I can quote Al Jilks, who would speak later in the week in another presentation organized by the National Library Service. But he said several years ago, and I quote, there is a lot of fact in researcher Dr. Elizabeth Watson's conclusion that Jackie Opal was not appreciated by Barbadians. Of course, that is perhaps during his lifetime. Uh, I don't know how many of us would agree that during Bob Marley's lifetime that he was appreciated by all Jamaicans or people around the world. But Jackie Opel, on returning to Barbados, Jill said, he struggled for support. Bajans came out to see Jackie only when he was against, up against international artists. In other words, he's saying that when a sense of nationalism was necessary to be invoked, they would show up. Pretty much to what Professor Beckel said about that famous test match, West Indies versus South Africa at Kensington Oval when Anderson Cummins um, was left out. Let's move on to speak now about Opel's creation of Spooch. Spooch, we recognize, contains many elements or motifs from ska. Not only from ska, from the popular music that was played, that were played in the US in the 1960s. We understand that after his death, collectors across the globe have rushed or had rushed to acquire many of his recordings. I would like to speak now about his impact, specifically about his impact. Mike Allen, Professor Mike Allen, he reminds us that when Spooge first emerged, there was no soca. In other words, when Spooge first emerged, there was basically in the Caribbean region Calypso, Mento, and Ska. And ska was about that time moving into Rocksteady. And Rocksteady, we all know, was succeeded by reggae and from reggae dancehall. So when Opel produced ska, so, sorry, Spooge, he was leading a movement in Barbados and in the Eastern Caribbean 
to create a new form of music. To move away from Calypso into a style, most persons would perhaps argue, that would be more commercially viable. In Spooch, for me, there are two main motifs. The corbel or snare drum, and sometimes the hi-hat, playing the well-recognized katap, 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 and the guitar strum, the guitar strum, which some say originated from Calypso, and I'm not a very good singer, vocalist, but I'll say that it's be, it goes like ka-ching, 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 right? And uh, you would hear some of this in the background. The vocal style, perhaps, is where Opel signature is more defined. I would describe it as silky smooth, and people might say, well, silky smooth, and he's aggressive. So I say silky smooth with a touch of modern rock. But noticeably, his diction, his diction is impeccable. There's an extreme focus by him on elocution. And if you don't know what elocution is, you need to listen to Paul Skeen Douglas and his short story on choir practice. Some describe his vocals as being soul drenched. Soul drenched. What comes to mind is uh, those oldies that Barbadians and Bajans like so much. Unchained melody, unchained melody. A very good rendition of unchained melody is the kind of image that comes to mind with Jackie Opel singing. So he was comparable to American singers. In other words, there are men who say to you that his style of singing was one in which he wanted to be recognized internationally. Funny enough, one notable thing about Jackie Opel is his absence of so-called Bajanisms. Because in today in modern Barbadian popular music, we have a lot of Bajanisms. Um, what Camo Bradford called the nation language, the use of the indigenous words and phrases and uh, pronunciation and so on. Besides his vocal style, his emphasis on stage performances and dress and dance moves. What comes to mind is the modern day performers, the emphasis on movements, uh, to use Mark Fingal's word, movementations. So his emphasis on stage performance. Unfortunately, as Dr. Elizabeth Watson reminded us, there apparently up until now is no video footage of Jackie Opel performing. So we are speaking here of descriptions that appear in the, the press across the globe and contemporaries re recollection. Another inspiration from Jackie, I would say, is the recognition by many that musician is an occupation. He was clearly a musician. He clearly de declared himself to be a musician. So, Jackie Opel, after his death, became the symbol of what one can achieve in the music industry and the impact one can leave and the legacy. But I would like to say as well 
that about the time of his death, we have emerging in Barbados a mature recording industry. We have the work of West Indies Record Limited World at Apple Waits, which was started in 1964. So from the late 1960s, early 1970s, you have a lot of recordings being done um, in the Caribbean, Eastern Caribbean region. You have all in Barbados producing records for the various neighboring territories, for Grenada, for St. Vincent, and so on. We have also the impact of the Merrymen and the trade winds, and so on. You have the emergence of multi-track recordings. We move from the one-track recordings, which were done at the Barbados Radio Fusion and at the Caribbean Broadcasting Corporation, CBC, at that time, of course, located at Black Rock, at the Lazaretto, where now we have the School of Graduate Studies and the Usain Bolt Athletics Track. You have New Studios, Multitrack, REC Studios, Searles Factory Yard that did a lot of work for regional recorders, Paradise Alley, and so on. For me, the 1973 record by the Drayton Stu, the album titled Ross Pooch, which contains a tribute to Opel, is symbolic because it shows that within that short period of his passing, that Spooge had begun to gain ground, that the music industry in Barbados had begun to expand. What about after Spooge? I would like to invoke here the words of Dr. Eddie Grant of Blue Wave Studios in St. Philip. In speaking about Ring Bang, with his refrain, Ring Bang for Life, Eddie Grant said, every generation adds to the stock. I'll repeat, every generation adds to the stock. So Eddie Grant came in 1982 and established Blue Wave Studio at St. Philip, with a smaller one at the Pepper Pot. And he helped to modernize Calypso and Soka production techniques, techniques and so on. So he came in the 80s and added to the stock. So just as Jackie and Spooge helped to influence and get other younger and lesser known Barbadian and Caribbean musicians to add to the stock, Eddie Grant did in the 1980s. So the point I'm highlighting here is the importance of inspiration for those from those who came before and those who come after. Again, Mike Aline has reminded us that it was not until 2005 that the Barbadian artists achieved major international album sales. And of course, that was Rihanna. Before Rihanna, it was Rupee with his Tempted to Touch that entered the US top 40 in November of 2004. But before Rupi, Rihanna, we could go, let's see, as far back as 1982, between 82 and 87, and we could go to Montserrat with Arrow, where it's hot, 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 which was done over in 1987 by Buster Point Dexter, and Sam Douglas of Trinidad and Tobago, who let the dogs out in 1999, redone 
by the Bahamian in 2000. And Kevin Little turned me on of 2003. I would argue, I would argue, I would argue that much of what took place after 2003 has and still continue to be influenced by the success of Turn Me On, Tempted to Touch, and Rihanna. But I would say to you that all of these achievements can be traced back to the significance of the inspiration of from Jackie Opel in the late 60s, 70s. So that Opel created a momentum of the modernization of the Caribbean music industry. Spooge helped inspire Soka because Soka came after Spooge. And of course, in Soka, we have what Professor Cowen best called Poe Soka. Poe so Soka. Um, you have Popso. We have Groovy Soka, Raga Soka, Power Soka, Sweet Soka, and on and on. And of course, Ring Band. The creation of Spooge reinforced the possibilities as, I had, as had happened in Jamaica with Ska to move beyond Calypso and Mento. In Barbados today, the latest movement is Bashment or Bashment Soka. In Trinidad and Tobago, we have the Zessa movement. In Jamaica, we have what is now called Trap Dancehall. Jackie Opel Spooge Barbados had, has played an important role in influencing post developments or in the Caribbean music industry. I just want to remind you before I go of other events being held by the National Library Service to celebrate the birthday of Jackie Opel. There is an interview with Mark Williams entitled Reflections on Jackie Opel. And this would be broadcast on social media on August 25th at 10.30 a.m. On the 27th of August at 5 p.m. there will be a round table discussion on the life of Jackie Opel at the National Library Services headquarters. And it will be broadcast on Zoom. It would feature the most honorable Dr. Anthony Gabby Carter, Al Jilks, Richard Stout, Desmond Fallweeks of the famous Drayton's 2. So you could see the Drayton's 1 will be there. And Mark Williams. If you need more information, please visit the GIS website or Facebook page. I'm Cleve Scott and I thank you for sharing the last 30 minutes with me. Blessings.